To implement pipelining, we need sequence number range for the packets. Let's assume the number of bits that provide sequence numbers in a packet is k, providing us the packet sequence numbers of 0 to 2 to the power of k minus 1. We have a window size of up to n consecutive unact packets load. In this way, the sequence of packets in the sender could be shown as those send and act, which are shown in this figure in dark blue. Those send and unact, which are light blue, and are starting from a pointer called base. Those that are within window size n from the base that are not sent yet, but since within window size could be sent. These are marked with a pointer next sequence number and are shown in the figure with gray. And finally, those that are outside window size n that are not usable, which are shown white. In go back n, when timeout happens for packet n, that packet and all packets with higher sequence numbers in the window will be retransmitted. In go back n, when data from the upper layer arrives using RDT send, the sequence number is checked. If the sequence number is not within the window range, it will be refused for now. But if it is within the window, the packet is made and sent. And if the packet is the first unacknowledged packet on the fly, the timer is started. If timeout happens, all the unacknowledged packets on the fly will be retransmitted. If a packet, like an ACK packet, is received but is corrupt, nothing additional will be done and the wait will continue. And if an ACK packet is received and it is non-corrupt, it will be checked upon the base and updated to the new value. And if ACKs for all the sent packets are received, the timer will be stopped. On the receiver side, on the event of correct packet received, if it has the expected sequence number, the data will be extracted and sent to the upper layer. The ACK for the expected sequence number will be sent and the expected sequence number updated. On any other event, the receiver will discard the packet and resend the last ACK. Go back in is an ACK only mechanism. It may generate duplicate ACKs as it always repeats the act for the highest in order sequence number. This also makes the mechanism of the receiver fairly easy as it only needs to remember what sequence number to expect next. In the event of out of order packets, as we saw, the packet will be discarded and the last in order sequence number will be acknowledged. Therefore, there is no buffering and keeping out of order packets in the receiver side. Assume we have a window of size 4. This means the sender could have up to 4 unact packets on the fly. Sender sends packets 0 to 3 and waits for acknowledgement. If a packet, for example packet number 2, is lost, but packets after received, packet 3, 4, and 5 will be discarded and the acknowledgements from the receiver will keep acknowledging up to packet 1 which is the last in order received packet. When the time up for packet 2 happens the packets from that sequence number will be retransmitted and when received properly on the receiver side the acts will also begin to reflect the increase in the sequence number. 